Hey everybody, today I want to talk about one of the most misunderstood relationships within the Beatles, and that is the relationship between Paul McCartney and George Harrison. Now, of course, the Beatles all had unique relationships with each other uh, during the Beatle years and the solo years, um, and those all changed over time as well, because obviously they were all very, very close in the beginning, uh, and then throughout the breakup and the solo years, they kind of drifted apart, but then also drifted back together. And that's all a video within itself. But what I wanna talk about is specifically the relationship between Paul and George during the Beatle years. Now I think over time there's been a big misconception about this relationship. And I think generally people think that uh, Paul, there are two, two things that people think. The first one is that Paul was very, very bossy uh, when it came to George in the studio and w as far as uh, recording uh, Paul songs, George was or uh, Paul was very bossy with George and would tell him what to play and George didn't like this. The other thing I think, the, the other thing that people get wrong that they think is true is that generally uh, when it came to George's songs in the studio, he didn't get that much time with his songs and it was generally Paul who didn't want to give him that time and wanted to rush through his songs. Um, but as I'm gonna tell you and show you throughout this video, I think those two, those two misconceptions are completely, completely false. Uh, and what got me thinking about this and one, wanted me to make this actual video is I was listening to the Beatles' White Album 50th Anniversary box set, which is fantastic, by the way. Uh, and I was listening to the Sessions uh, discs of the, of the set, and I noticed that on a lot of George's songs, like While My Guitar Gently Weeps, Long, 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 Savoy Truffle, um, during those sessions, Paul is right there next to George, helping him however he can, um, and generally speaking, John is nowhere to be heard on these session tapes. Or if he is there, it's a very, very minimal role. And that got me thinking um, that I wonder throughout the Beatles uh, recording output when it, come to, when it came to George's songs, did John have a, a big input on a lot of George's uh, recordings? And he generally did not. If, you're, if you go back and look, um, especially from like, uh, the White Album uh, onward to the end of their career, generally speaking, John either isn't even on George's tracks or just has such a, a minimal, minimal role. And we'll talk about that uh, throughout the video. But the, uh, on the opposite end, Paul is on every single one of those tracks and played a very, very important role. So I think that that this misconception started uh, and it stemmed from a very, very important clip in the Let It Be film. And that clip is the very, very famous argument between Paul and George over the song Two of Us, which is a song that Paul brought to the sessions. And during this famous clip, which I'm sure all of you have seen, uh, Paul and George have an argument about the arrangement and about what George should be playing uh, during the verses of the song. And Paul is saying, I'm, by the way, I'm paraphrasing and making this, just kind of simplifying it. But generally speaking, Paul is saying to George that he thinks he shouldn't play quite as much during the verse. And George is just kind of fed up and says, I'll play whatever you want me to play or I won't play at all, whatever you want. They're just both very, very frustrated. Now, this specific scene has been uh, analyzed and discussed in a amazing, amazing video that I will link down uh, down below by a YouTube channel called Pop Goes the 60s, which I highly recommend. He does in-depth videos about not just the Beatles, but about all kinds of 60s music in general. And his videos are always excellent, excellent. Uh, and in this video, he talks about this scene in the Let It Be film and really gives a good backstory about it, uh, tells you about what happened before before it, before the portion shown in the movie, and what happened afterward, and it's just excellent. So I won't go too much into that because he's already done a fantastic job on that. So I go check that out for sure. But what that one particular scene I think showed was that Paul and George obviously had an argument, and that you know tensions were very very high. But I think it sparked this idea that this was how it always was in the studio with Paul and George. Uh, and of course, later on, George, um, later on in like uh, after the Beatles broke up, George was interviewed and would, would make comments about Paul and say like, 
you know, Paul didn't let me play what I wanted to play, or I'd show up to a session for one of Paul's songs, and Paul already had an arrangement uh, planned out, and uh, I wasn't even allowed to take my guitar out of the case. It got ridiculous, that kind of stuff. And while I'm sure that's what George felt, um, I think that after the Beatles, um, the Beatles individually were all pretty bitter about the whole Beatle breakup thing, and they did say a lot of pretty negative things uh, that I think that with hindsight, they probably would agree that those weren't exactly true. Uh, and so this idea sparked that George and Paul had this really, really bad relationship in the studio when it came to recording uh, the Beatles songs. Now what I want to do is go back a little bit and talk about uh, how I think this is a big misconception and that actually uh, when it came to George and Paul, they were very, very productive in the studio together and um, actually had a really, really good relationship even after the Beatles breakup. Now, the first thing I want to talk about, and I'm sure, by the way, that bef even before this, there are other examples of them working great together. But the first thing I want to talk about is the song, And I Love Her. So Paul brought this amazing song to the Beatles sessions in 1964 for the album Hard Day's Night. And he brought the song in and he famously talks about how George contributed the, uh, the really amazing opening lick, the da 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 da. That was George's contribution to the song. And Paul goes on to say that he thinks that lick basically like makes the song. Now, I agree as far as for the arrangement, that lick is very, very important and it totally just makes the song perfect. And this is a great example of a time when Paul, you know, let George contribute an arrangement to one of his songs, arguably one of his most famous ballads, and it added so much to the song. And really, uh, you know, if you listen to that song now, that lick, if you think of Am I Love Her, that is the lick of the song. That's the first thing I think about. So that's a great example of when Paul and George worked great together in the studio, especially with George adding uh, to an arrangement for a Paul song. Now, another really uh, important uh, arrangement idea that George brought to a Paul song, although it was really a Paul and a John song, was the song, We Can Work It Out. So when the song goes to waltz time, uh, which is uh, when it goes to uh, the fussing and fighting at the end of that part, the fussing and fighting, my friend, it goes to the dum da da dum da da which is a waltz time. That was George Harrison's idea. And he brought that to the arrangement and it really adds to that. And it's such a weird thing to do because the rest of the song is in 4-4 time. I was trying to see it my way. One, two, three, four. But then the fussing and fighting, my friend, goes to that 3-4, which is a really weird thing to do. And you would generally think that'd be like kind of a John thing to do. But it was George that suggested that. And it was a suggestion that obviously Paul uh, welcomed and added so much to that song. Now, another fantastic example, and probably the very first example of Paul contributing to a George song was the song Taxman, which of course is the first song on the Revolver album. And it's a great, great rock uh, song that George had written. But Paul plays the guitar solo on that. And it is one of the best guitar solos within the whole Beatles catalog, in my opinion. Uh, and George even went on to say that uh, Paul, um, he loved what Paul did and that Paul even added like an Indian flavor to the solo, which he totally did, which suited obviously George's style. And it just made the song that much better. Because imagine Tax Man without the solo, it would still be a great song, but that solo just kicks the song into a whole nother level. And it was such an important, important part to that song. And it's interesting that George um, would have Paul play the solo on that. And of course, George would famously go on to have another guitar player play a solo on one of his big songs, which is Walmart Guitar and the Weeps. He had Eric Clapton come in and play it. So George was very, very um, open to having his friends come in and add their best bits to his songs. Uh, and Taxman is a great example of that. Now, Another time period uh, that Paul and George worked really, really great together was the White Album. And this is the time I think that gets majorly overlooked. Uh, and I think generally people think that the White Album is just this miserable, miserable time for the Beatles and they weren't uh, friendly at all. 
And this is, I think, when it stems that a lot of people think that Paul and George relationship started going majorly downhill. Now, of course, there is the famous episode of when they were recording Hey Jude, which is, of course, the single uh, from the Let It Be Sessions. They're recording Hey Jude, and Paul um, and George did get into a little bit of an argument over the guitar playing on Hey Jude. George wanted to play a bunch of answering guitar lines uh, after each of the verse parts, and Paul didn't want that in the song. And they had an argument about that. And famously, George ended up not really playing uh, much guitar on the song at all, and George had hurt feelings about it. Now, that's all true. That's all been talked about. But that's really the only case during those sessions where that happened. Because in other, other parts of the album, uh, you have George and Paul working together famously. And like I said, this box set that was released for the White Album uh, really revealed a lot of this uh, that we didn't know before. And the first thing I want to really talk about is the song While My Guitar Gently Weeps. So there's a, an early take from the White Album sessions where it's just George on guitar and Paul playing organ. And Paul and George are working out the song together. It's very, very early. And you can tell it's like George is showing the song to Paul uh, and Paul is working out the chords. But Paul is really helping with the arrangement and he's right there with George. Now, what's interesting about this particular outtake is that I don't hear John on there whatsoever. John is really nowhere to be found. You don't even really hear Ringo. It's just Paul and George working out the arrangement. Now, there are also some later takes of the song where you have the whole band playing together. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's John, John's playing bass. Uh, Eric Clapton's there at the session playing guitar. George is playing acoustic and singing a guide vocal. Ringo's playing drums and Paul is playing organ. And during these, these outtakes, you can really hear Paul encouraging George uh, and having a really fun time. In fact, there's a part where George uh, sings the falsetto. He's trying to sing kind of like a Smokey Robinson kind of thing. And he even says, like, I was trying to do a Smokey and it didn't work out. And you hear Paul kind of joking with him, saying, like, ah, Harry, Harry, referring to Harry Nielsen, because Harry Nielsen was also known for doing these high kind of like falsetto things. So they were joking around and just generally having a good time. Uh, and Paul was really supportive of George. At least it seems that way uh, with these session outtakes. And another session outtake that really shows Paul and George working together uh, in a great way is George's song, Long, Long, Long. And on this song, it's just Paul on organ, George on acoustic guitar, and Ringo on drums. And John doesn't even appear on the track at all, which is pretty interesting because this becomes a trend that will go on uh, throughout the Let It Be sessions and the Abbey Road sessions. But on Long, 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 the three Beatles, especially George and Paul, are really working together great on this one. Uh, and they really create um, a fun atmosphere in the studio. You can really hear it on these session outtakes. Uh, and it's just a really, really uh, a pleasure to listen to. Um, and the other song that features uh, George and Paul working really great together is Savoy Truffle, which is another amazing rock song. Uh, and they really, they're, they're singing the harmonies together on that song, and the harmonies are excellent on that tune. And it's another case of where John isn't even on the track at all, which again, is pretty interesting when you think about it, because generally speaking, uh, it's what all the other misconceptions that have been is that Paul and George weren't really working that great together on the White Album because they had that argument with Hey Jude, but really they just had that one argument and then kind of put it to the side and worked great together on the other songs, uh, including, by the way, some of Paul's songs, like Martha, My Dear, um, which for the longest time, everyone thought that it was just Paul playing everything on that track. But actually, when you look at the photos from the sessions at Trident Studios, George is playing guitar on that song, uh, and Ringo's playing drums as well. Uh, and obviously, it's a great song. It sounds great. They're working great together on that. And George contributes some really, really cool guitar parts to that. Uh, and by the way, also, John is not featured on Martha, My Dear. Um, so thing, another thing that I think is very important to talk about is how the Beatles, all the Beatles, they could argue amongst themselves uh, a lot and have heated arguments, but they were so good at having an argument, putting it to the side, and not revisiting it, and moving on, uh, and getting to work, and, and doing great work, and forgetting about the bad stuff that happened in the past. 
And they, they did this throughout their career, obviously until the end where they weren't able to do it anymore. But during the White Album especially, they could have big arguments, but they would forget about it, show up the next day, and work together and create great, great, great music. So that's an important thing to think about when it comes to the Beatles, and especially the relationship between Paul and George. And you have to think about this as well. Paul and George uh, met early, early on. They were very, very young when they met. I think, um, I think Paul was 14 and George was like 13 when they first met. Uh, so they met even before John and Paul met, uh, and of course before even the rest of the Beatles met Ringo. So Paul and George had the earliest relationship uh, amongst the four Beatles. So they have such a long history together that I think they were able to have arguments, but then put them to the side and move on like brothers and continue to work well together, which is what they did on the White Album. Now. Moving on to the Get Back, Let It Be sessions, which are, again, also controversial sessions that I think, generally speaking, many people think that Paul and George were not getting along during these sessions as well, based on the argument that's in the Let It Be film uh, when it comes to two of us. But actually, Paul and George, again, worked really, really well together, uh, especially on a lot of the songs George was, was bringing to the sessions, songs that he would later record on his uh, triple album, All Things Must Pass including the title track, All Things Must Pass, um, songs like, um, uh, let's see, Let It Down, Let it, Let it Down, he brought to the sessions, uh, and a bunch of other, other tracks that he worked on during those sessions, like Hear Me Lord. And Paul, if you listen to the outtakes, Paul is right there with him, uh, helping with the arrangements, trying to get George to, to show him what he wants on the song. But John is completely disinterested disinterest, in a lot of George's songs. He does help, um, like on All Things Is Fast, he plays organ, and he's trying to do the best he can, but he tends to get kind of bored with a lot of George's songs. And famously, in the film, for the song I Me Mine, John doesn't even par participate. In fact, he kind of mocks the song and goes and does like a waltz with Yoko while the other Beatles are working on I Me Mine. So John was not that supportive of George, throughout this time period, as far as George's songs go. Uh, but Paul actually was pretty supportive. And then moving on, famously to Abbey Road, George contributed two of the best songs on the album, Something and Here Comes the Sun. Now on Something, John does play piano on the track, but it's pretty much buried in the mix. And uh, I think during the outro or, or like the end part of the song, um, it used to have a big ending at the end. It was this big instrumental ending that they that they that they add on to the track, and you could hear uh, John playing piano on that. But that part of the song was actually cut off, and they didn't end up using it. So really, on the song "Something," John doesn't c contribute all that much to it because the harmonies are Paul and George working together, and the arrangement is pretty much George um, working with George Martin on like the strings, and it was generally just. George and Paul in the studio working on something. And of course, Paul famously uh, added that amazing bass line as motorcycle goes by. The amazing bass line on something uh, that I think is fantastic. Now, George, of course, went on to say that he thought it was a bit busy uh, and was a little bit too busy for the track. And Paul even said that, you know, this was the time where it was George's turn to tell Paul what to play on a song. But I think, generally speaking, um, there goes the motorcycle again. Uh, generally speaking, Paul added a lot to George's song, Something, uh, and really made it uh, even better than it was going to be uh, on its own, which, by the way, on its own, it was amazing, uh, uh, just in its acoustic state, which you can listen to an acoustic demo of something, also on uh, the Abbey Road uh, box set that came out. But the other song of George's on Abbey Road is Here Comes the Sun which doesn't feature John at all on the track. Now, this isn't because John wasn't interested. It's because John was in a car accident with Yoko and didn't attend some of the early Abbey Road sessions. So this is a track that Paul and George and Ringo worked on together in the studio. And of course, the harmonies on this song are absolutely amazing. And this is another example of George and Paul working together so fantastically well on a song uh, that was George's in the studio. And those harmonies are so excellent. And there are some amazing Linda McCartney photos from this session that show uh, Paul and George working together uh, on the harmonies. And they're just some 
some really, really great photos of them just having a good time, laughing together, uh, and just showing that generally speaking, they were still uh, on great terms together as uh, friends. So those are just some of the, some of the Beatle uh, sessions and Beatle uh, contributions that Paul and George made to each other's songs that I think show that they actually had a really, really good relationship throughout the Beatle years. Uh, and later on, when it got like after the breakup, they did have some strained uh, times together. And of course, George was a lot more outspoken about how he felt about his Beatle years. Uh, and a lot of the times he felt like Paul was bossing him around. And of course, I don't wanna discredit George because that's how he felt and that's what he said. All I'm saying in this video is that when you look back at some of the session outtakes and some of the photos and some of the, the video footage, generally speaking, Paul and George actually had a pretty good relationship and worked really, really well together. And if anything, the relationship between George and John during the later Beatle years was really more the more of the strained relationship, uh, especially in the studio. Another thing that I didn't even mention, and I won't get that much into, but during the Get Back, Let It Be sessions, during the filming of that, it was actually George and John that had the biggest argument. Uh, they had a huge, huge blowout. And that's actually what led George to leave the Beatles during those sessions um, for a little while. And George was just fed up with, with John, the John and Yoko thing, and I'm sure some of the Paul stuff as well. But really, it was that argument with John that really sent George uh, leaving the Beatles during that time period. So when it comes to the Beatles, there are just so many misconceptions and so many weird myths that have developed over time. And this is just one that I wanted to talk about a little bit, this idea that Paul and George just didn't get along and didn't really work together that great musically. But obviously, in my opinion, and what I think has been has come to light now with these box sets and stuff, is that they actually did work really well together and had a great relationship. Um, and even after, by the way, after the Beatles split up, they still kind of socialized together uh, more than you would think. Uh, for example, when George went on his um, solo tour in 1974, the Dark Horse tour, uh, Paul and Linda wore disguises and, and watched George's show at Madison Square Garden uh, and then hung out with him afterward. Uh, and Paul even went on, uh, on record on an interview and said that he thought that the show was great and that George sounded great and that he liked a lot of the rearrangements George made to some of his older songs. And then later on, uh, when Wings, Paul McCartney and Wings put out Venus and Mars, they had a big party on the Queen Mary in Long Beach, California for the launch of the album. And George and uh, his wife, Olivia, showed up to the party. And there's a great photo of George and Paul hugging. So they were still friends and uh, they were able to put whatever differences they had with business and the break of the Beatles to the side and still remain close. Uh, and that happened all the way up until uh, George's passing. Uh, in fact, George even passed away in a house that Paul owned uh, in, in Beverly Hills. So they were close uh, and uh, they could bicker, but generally speaking, they were close and they worked obviously really, really well together. And uh, I just think their relationship is a very fascinating one and one that doesn't get talked about all that much. And like I said, one that I think gets, uh, gets wrongly, uh, wrongly looked at by a lot of people. And uh, yeah, so that's just a video I wanted to make talking about that relationship. Uh, I hope that it maybe uh, clued you in a little bit more to uh, Paul and George. And uh, I'd love to know in the comments below what you think about their relationship and uh, if maybe you think everything I just said was completely wrong. Um, so let me know, comments below what you think and uh, stay tuned for more videos and take care and bye for now.